What's going on guys, Commander Awesome here. Today I have for you a brief overview of what Alpha 9.4 has in store. Um, since I'd say Alpha 8 really has just been home run after home run after home run as far as these updates are concerned. Um, a lot of big changes and additions um, between, you know, I'd say even Alpha 8 to, to now. So Alpha 9.4 has added a ton. This is like almost something that they should have had for Alpha 10, um, being the fact that, you know, usually they save all the real big goodies for like, you know, the full updates. Um, but dude, I'm not complaining. Uh, Alpha 9.4 is definitely, definitely something you guys should check out. Um, it's, it's amazing. So anyway, we're gonna start off with basically the change log uh, for gameplay. So if you take a look here, uh, let's see if we can get in closer. Um, a lot of the uh, the vehicles and their tickets and their counters uh, have all been altered to, for game balancing. A lot of the tickets have been reduced. So, you know, when you lose a Vic, it's not as painful. Although, you know, that doesn't mean that you wanna sit out there and you wanna start throwing your, your vehicles around. Um, but let's see here. Uh, so I'm just gonna briefly, you guys can pause this and and you know whatever you want to look to see these details of these vehicles i'm not going to go through every individual one there we go there's that one and then there's this one oh baby yeah we're gonna be talking about these bad boys coming up soon the new m wraps all right, so that is a brief look at what is changed with the vehicle tickets. Now, they've added a new class or a new kit, which is now the recruit kit, and all they have is a weapon and an entrenchment tool. Um, uh, let's see, they also have, with the heavy anti-tank, there's now only one per team. So once your team hits 20 members or 20 people, uh, that is unlocked and only one per team not one per squad one per team So that specific person using the hat or that specific squad using the hat really has to be on top of their game um, uh, This is a big deal here um, Once you hit an APC striker yada yada it will no longer instantly blow up the vehicle will now burn up and be destroyed But now the crew has passed and the passengers have a chance to jump out fight which is great, so it's not just insta-kill. That's kind of nice, I like that. Um, it's a nice balance to the game. I think that, yes, a lot of people be like, oh, well, what the hell is the hat for then? Well, it's gonna do massive damage, but you know, eventually it'll burn and blow, but at least gives the other team a chance to jump out so you can have dismounts. So obviously, you know now, you get hit, wait for the dismounts. Uh, let's see, the, the hat has been moved to the fire support category. All right, heavy anti tank is now limited to one per team. I just talked about that. All medics now have one frag grenade. Boom! That's huge. That's so huge. I don't know how many times I've been a medic where I've been stuck in a situation where I'm picking guys up, but there's contacts on the other side of a wall, and I just need one grenade to keep my team going. Um, that's great. Uh, they reduced from two to one on the scout kit with the frags. That's good too. Scouts should not be a simple assault force. That should be somebody who's you know, glassing, looking, you know, so I, I think that's a good change. Uh, limited the scout kick to a maximum of six per team. It's another great idea. That's what I wish a lot of games would do, just so you don't sit there and have a sniper fest. And granted, the scout kit isn't like some OP force at the moment anyway, but once, you know, maybe in the future, when they put like eight times scopes in or something crazy, uh, that'll be a huge deal. Uh, increase the limit on the scout kit from three to four squad where it's available okay uh oh here we go here's a big one guys we have anti-tank mines and we have ieds also have the ieds have a phone detonator uh five decoy rocks do it decoy rocks to the scout kit so basically that what it means is you, you put the ied down and you throw a rock on top of it you can also put down ieds and you can dig them into the ground utilizing your entrenchment tool so that's kind of huge um, but yeah, there's the deployable rocks, uh, so you can conceal the mines. Scout can have up to three anti-tank mines deployed at any time, up to five decoy deployed at any time, and only one large IED on the map at a time. 
placing a new one will remove the oldest from the world. When you've placed the mine or ID, you can dig it further into the ground, help conceal it. So that's basically, you know, and they're also talking about a little, little tip here, leave it in plain sight to add, to attempt to spook and funnel the enemies. So you can use it as, you know, as a diversion as well. Um, and then another huge, huge addition, the added mortar support. The mortars, I can't tell you how important they are in this game now. Um, a lot of people might be saying, oh, they're OP and all this. It's not the case. Um, strategy is huge here. It's very huge. You know, you can only limit two per fob. The one thing is, is if you have a mortar team, okay, that's two guys. So essentially that's one squad uh, that is going to be utilizing these mortars. Now, granted, you could sit there and put three fobs on the map, have three different squads, but now you're limited on your assault force. So understanding how these mortars work and and really honing in on the skills and precision of these mortars is going to be huge to the game but granted you're going in you find a fob hey found an enemy fob here guys let's mortar this position because granted obviously the mortars are going to be within the mortar uh within the fob location so you know obviously you can return fire mortar wise um again limited two per fob uh, mortar comes with a magazine of three rounds uh, at the ready. Reloading this magazine costs 90 ammo points per fob at the fob. Okay. Uh, let's see. The current set of mortars in the squad, 1,230 meter effective range on the level surface. Uh, you have to migrate your fire support. Okay. So basically, here's a tip. Using the arrow keys uh, up and down, you can scrap mine in one. So when you zoom in, there's a reticle. And then on the side, there's a chart that tells you what is going to line up for the meters it works pretty nice i think it's a pretty good ui um but basically you're out of range you're gonna to have to dig it up drop a new fob set new ones down so that's really nice i've seen some really good things on 9.4 so far utilizing the mortars it's very very good for assaulting suppress the hell out of them and you move just keep it coming and just keep in mind guys when you're firing these mortars it's not like you just want to keep firing 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 you want to have them talk so you have one mortar one mortar one mortar, one mortar. So you just have basic suppression at all times going. Um, be aware of how much ammo you guys are using, all that, so that you can effectively assault targets, effectively suppress targets. It's just so good. I'm loving it. The sounds are awesome for it. Um, and it just adds a whole new aspect to the game. It's incredible. Next, we have one of my personal favorites uh, in the army is the MRAP. MRAPs are just amazing. Um, I, they're, they're, they're damage models, or I should say their uh, armor models are between, I believe, the Striker and the Humvee. So, you know, obviously the Humvee's the weakest, and you have the Striker. Now this is your middle ground. Comes with a Crows variant and a regular variant. Um, how, I mean, what, what more can I say? How amazing, how amazing these things look. Look at these. These are beautiful. The level of detail. And the interiors, I must say, are just spot on. Just amazing. Um, so you guys should definitely check it out. No doubt. Uh, we also have another MTLB. Uh, this has got a 14.5 turret for the Russians. So it's an MTLB. It's, you know, lightly armored. Not going to really take much juice. Uh, so, you know, keep them out of sight. That goes for all vehicles in this game right now. You don't run them right into the fight. You keep them at a distance. Suppress the enemy. Just support the guys that are advancing. Uh, let's see. All main bases now have a no deployable zone. All right. So basically, you can't sit there and camp somebody. I ran into a situation where we were about 200 meters outside of of an area, a spawning area, and we tried to fire on enemies that were coming out. We weren't spawn camping. This was the insurgency um, game mode. So you know how they just spawn out of everywhere, but. Generally, we, we knew they were coming from that way, and, and really, you're, you're defending or you're assaulting uh, the, the, the uh, uh, cash. So basically, we found where they're coming from. They were protected inside the base. It literally, we shoot, and it would be a force field. We even took a vehicle into the enemy spawn area, and it like knocked us out of the vehicle, flipped the vehicle. It's like this huge force field. I think there's a little tinkering that needs to be done on it still with how things work. Uh, I, I believe you should be able to drive through it, just maybe you won't be able to shoot. I mean, if you're stupid enough to drive right into their spawn area, then you should get shot up. I don't think it should knock you out of the vehicle. Uh, and maybe that's not how it happens all the time, that's just what I encountered. Um, 
decrease the volume of engine sounds when inside of a vehicle. That's huge. I hear a lot of complaints about the MTLBs just being huge, uh, really loud. Um, the gunner and driver now be able to actually communicate without hearing that so loud. Uh, essentially, it should be quieter inside the vehicle than it is outside anyway. So I think that's a really good idea. Um, no, I'm not, it is inside, yeah. So inside is exactly how it should be. Uh, change the way the RPG-7 and the SPG-9 rockets behave for you. So they had too high muzzle velocity. Now they have an accurate lower muzzle velocity and a rocket assisted boost after leaving the barrel. That's kind of nice. Um, definitely adds a little bit more realism to the game. There is greater different differentiation, differentiation, yeah, what? Uh, between the different round types, fragmentation rockets will fly the straightest, heats drop a bit more, and the heavies obviously are gonna be feeling as fat as it looks. Reduce the rearming time on the 30 millimeter cannons uh, to be more in line with the other vehicles. That's kind of nice. Added randomized deflection for penetration projectiles. This has been a huge addition in 9.4 that I've noticed. Um, I got killed multiple times hunkered down in a building, which is good. I mean, you're under fire. I mean, right? So a 5.56 five, should easily go through a wooden shed. There's no doubt about that. I mean, even a cinder block wall in some cases. So upon exiting a material, a bullet will deflect depending on the material and the caliber of the weapon. A good rule of thumb is that the bigger the caliber, the straighter it will continue to fly through objects. Yada, yada, yada. That's obvious. So <clears throat> the big guns are obviously going to poke through a little harder. Um, but 5.56, five, your generic M4s, all that stuff will penetrate uh, a lot of the uh, different materials, which I have noticed has been a huge effect on the game. Um, Woo! Systems created a new a no deployable zone that stops deployables from being used near the main bases and caches. So basically, that's what I was talking about. Um, no bullshit. You can't really use any any defenses or set up a fifty right outside a main base. That's really good. That's positive. That's just moving in a better direction uh, for balance and for for playability. Added better benchmarking now that runs in your first time. All right. So basically, they added a benchmarking tool which will which will help you decide your. Uh, decide your settings in your game here's a little little pick me up in case you don't really know what you're doing sort all deployables into subcategory subcategories to allow more options i found this a little a little tough because i wasn't sure the radial you have to take some time and take a look at the radial menu and really figure out where everything is it's kind of self-explanatory it's like opening different folders i'm just wondering if it's too many steps to get to certain things i haven't really decided yet i'll have to play with that a little bit more Added rocket acceleration, rocket projectiles, added invasion, game mode, and rule set. I absolutely love this game mode. It is very, very, very hard to be the assaulting team. I have yet to even get past the first or second point. Now, I don't know if that's just <clears throat> the squad's not communicating properly or just we just don't know how to do this yet. Um, but generally, I've been getting my ass kicked as the assaulting team, which is fine. I'm all for it being harder. And I think that it just, it forces you to really utilize your squad's uh, SL communications and really get it down. Everybody really needs to be on the same page of what the objective is, keep it moving. There is no bone wolfing in that at all. Uh, made team score, not scrolling the scoreboard, added turret sounds for the BTR. Beautiful. Oh, all right, so UI. Big improvements here, guys. Big improvements, especially for you squad leads out there that really, really, really would like a little bit better description on the map. So first off, uh, grid readouts for mouse pointers and player position. Okay, so we have alpha one, keypad one, sub keypad six. Okay, so obviously you can see alpha one, uh, grid, or keypads, keypad one, and then six on an inner keypad so just imagine big keypad medium keypad little keypad amazing goes throughout the entire map very easy that way you're not sitting there wondering what the hell somebody's saying i don't understand or somebody messes up their keypad it happens a lot i do it sometimes so that's really cool um somebody says alpha one keypad one uh sub keypad six i'm like oh okay boop hit it right there you're marked everything's perfect moving on you have the uh, dynamic scale, very good. It gives you, before you just had the scale of the map and what each grid consisted of, now as you zoom in, 
there's lines. So you have a red line, a white line, and a black line. Well, this this specific uh, uh, this specific grid focus here is just showing the black and the white. But zooming out further, it actually shows you in the red, I believe, as well. Uh, but again, here's your player position: C2, uh, Charlie two, keypad eight, sub keypad three, right there. Beautiful, awesome, awesome, awesome additions, guys. Awesome addition. Uh, let's see. And we can head on down. Updated the map grid system dynamic. Okay, we just talked about that. But here you go. For, for there's now major 300 meter, minor 100 meter, and sub 33 meter grids. Uh, we said that. Added grid reading on the map. The, the map will now show your current location. Okay, we talked about that. Added a green request fire mission marker for squad leaders to use when communicating with mortars. Easier to differ differentiate the calling out which MG marker you want to fire at. Very good idea um, that, they, that they put this in. Basically, anything that they can give a squad leader to communicate to their to their friendlies and other squads is really going to help the game. I mean, it, it's a lot of guys don't have, you know, the time to really be like, hey, I need it at, uh, you know, uh, Charlie five, keypad five. I need a mortar there. You just simply spot it on the map and say, yo, uh, two, this is one. I need a mortar fire on this position marked on map. Boom, done. Then they can take that from there. They can use the scaling, all that good stuff. Add enemy mortar spotter mark. So if you find a mortar on the map, you can mark it for enemy. Awesome. Add a vehicle health bar for when you're inside a vehicle. Very good idea. You really get an idea of how the vehicle is actually health wise. It's huge. You don't know, oh man, should we RTB and get this thing repaired yet? Or do you think we can hang in there? So it's a good idea. Audio, ambient audio overhaul on maps, Kokan and Al Basra, modified 3P pistol fire sounds and added new Makarov sounds. Very good. Anytime you guys update sound, I, I, it gives me the, the the quarter chub, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I'm a huge sound guy. I love it. It just adds to the immersion. So anytime they can add to that, beautiful. A modified M2 sounds that very good. New 50 caliber bullet snaps. I've seen some, I've heard some really, really good sounds in 9.4. Some that I never noticed before. Um, added new mortar sounds, obviously. Fire and explosion sounds incoming it's just so insane when they just start mortaring the shit out of you it's insane <coughs> added mine explosion sounds by the way ieds and mines are massive massive explosions they're really fun to watch the effects on them are beautiful dirt rains down from the sky it's incredible maps uh Gurdok, uh both as1 and 2 layers have been adjusted to increase frequency of combat <coughs> i mean how do you how many times have you guys been in the Gordok and sat there for 20 minutes not seeing a damn thing. So <clears throat> until they add, excuse me, until they add heli transports and different ways to transport guys around the map, it's going to be a better solution to, to kind of make it a little tighter. Even though the map's big, that's fine. Make it a little tighter, keep the keep the keep the flow of the game going a little bit more. I think it's a great idea. New lighting has been done uh, for all Albus Ra layers. I'm not too sure about this. I played on one of the versions where I felt like it was different from another version. I could be wrong. I felt like the contrast was a little high. Um, I don't use sweet effects. I don't use any of that stuff. So again, that could just be me. That's all, you know, up for opinion. Again, maybe, maybe that'll be a widespread thing. Maybe not. Maybe it's just me. Um, not sure if I liked it. I wish I would have taken some footage from it to show you guys, but unfortunately I did not. Relight on, uh, yeah, <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Uh, AS2, as it was too dark. It was definitely too dark. I always had to bump up my gamma. Awesome addition. Replace trees on Fool's Road with more old growth feel. Quite different. This is something I haven't seen yet. I'm very, I'm very interested in this. I'm looking forward to this because I feel like some of the maps, as well as they're beautiful and they're done very well, I feel like there's a lot of the same elements in there. A lot of the Eastern European feel. So. I am very much interested in seeing this. I can't wait. Jensen's range is amazing now. Amazing. Okay. As we drag upgraded functionality as well as include signage intending to help new players. It is very good the way they did it. Literally, you look at a hab and explains the hab. You look at an ammo box, it explains it. Look at all the way the things are done. It's so well done. Good job, uh, Off World Industries, for that upgrade. 
And I know a lot of people might say, oh, it's just a firing range. I'm on the firing range all the time, testing out new things, seeing how things work. So, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's amazing. Great job. Uh, new game mode has been added called the Invasion. We talked about that. Uh, let's see, maps containing Invasion game mode. These are all the maps con uh, with the Invasion. See, Al Basra is one that I've I've played um, a few times, and I've always I've only been the um, uh, what is this the insurgents one time, but when I was the U.S. man, we would come in right here above outskirts in this on this. Is it gonna get a little closer? Here we go. Uh, just to the west of outskirts, man, and the guys are just sitting there waiting. So you really need to figure out. You really need to utilize the entire city. Don't just go for the point. Flank around, hit hit below old gas station, come up here near a refinery, set fobs, get in behind the enemy. You can only cap in this direct order, but you need to just look at a bigger picture. I've noticed a lot of guys are just gunning for outskirts. Yes, the idea is to get to outskirts, but you need to set up mortar emplacements, just something to suppress the enemy. That's why it's in here. That's why mortars are here. Don't just say, oh, there's mortars. If you, if you don't utilize what you have available to you, you're not going to succeed. Fair enough. Oh, shit, went wrong way. Um, <clears throat> I haven't played Chore Night Invasion. I can't wait to do these. But look how tight this is now. I mean, Gordok Invasion. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm like dying over here. This looks awesome. Just how tight these points are. I think it looks great. The good thing is, is you can still utilize all this. So if you want to set a fob down here, uh, with mortars and you can just start firing away up here. I mean, just getting anything where you have to get the enemy to actually go away from defending a certain point is something that you want to do. Leave one squad at a, at a fob that's just being the harassment squad, right? So definitely look into that. Here's another one. I'm not a fan of this map. I can't even, I don't even know what to say, how to say it. Not a huge fan of this map, but I think that with the right layouts, it'll be a lot better. Uh, let's see, a lot of map changes. Expanded storage site on Yo Yayo. Got to incorporate the entire area. Kind of nice. Logistical trucks have been added to all inf uh, infantry layers for future proofing and general gameplay. Very nice. Bug fixes. Fixed game mode rules often not shown. Uh, fixed man's legend. Uh, radio menu tooltips not working. Fixed stamina widget showing when dead or in vehicles. Uh, here's a big one. Fixed shovels not finding the collision of deployable pro uh, deployables properly is now much easier to use a shovel. That has pissed me off in the past for sure. Uh, fixed insurgency cache is not spawning. I know that they had some bugs in that game mode. That's a fun game mode. It really is. It's a very intense mode. Them ironing things out like that is actually a really big, uh, a really big deal. Uh, fixed many causes of soldiers getting uh, offset in vehicles and getting ragdolled. I've had that. I've had that situation happen to me. That's not fun. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, here we go. This is this is huge. Fix alignment issues in grid system when zoomed in. Now you get the correct grid at all times. And fix flag loss component not awarding tickets when captured flag. So all in all, guys, if I had to give this update a a a out of ten, zero out of ten, I'd have to give this a nine out of ten. Um, it's an amazing update. It's absolutely amazing what they put out. Um, and the reason I probably hit it with one is because I'm just a little salty because I want the animation system. But honestly, you'd probably have to give it a 10 out of 10. Honestly, guys, look at what Off World Industries has done, uh, has done for us. I mean, this, this is, this is a game that not only has grown in the last few months, but the, the amount that they're giving you in such small increments is incredible. This is something that they could have even saved for Alpha 10 just to buy them time for when they put out Alpha 10. But they didn't. They pushed it forward because it's ready to rock and roll. And they're doing a fine job. I'm I'm all on board right now. I am all on board. You know, obviously, we've all had our issues with past uh, changes. Like Alpha 7. God, Alpha 7 was... The optimization was, was horrible. But... This is what good developers do. They come in, they fix the issues that are keeping people from playing this game. And then they come in, they add new juice, keep the flow going to keep everything moving. And, and, and essentially, this will, this will eventually be a game where it'll be completed and it'll, it'll just have everything we want. So, <clears throat> with that being said, guys, 
Get out there, try Alpha 9.4. I know a lot of people have taken breaks on this. Get out there, give it a go. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. I hope you guys enjoyed everything that I've showed you here. I gave you my initial impressions and I have played multiple hours 9.4. I really, really hope to see you guys out there. I wanna see everybody kicking some ass, unless you're like me who just fails over and over again. You get yelled at by everybody on the servers. But hey, I'm having a blast. Let's do this. Alpha 9.4.